Hello. Uh, I'm Ray Smith, a uh, Sunday school teacher here at Austin Grove. Uh, we're going to be continuing uh, today uh, in Romans. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off in uh, chapter 2. Uh, we left off at uh, verse 12, and we're going to do 12 through 13 today. Uh, it's a little shorter lesson than we usually uh, do, but I, I really wanted to, to take 14 through 16 as, as, a, as a whole. Uh so we might be a little bit shorter today. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll read that again. That's Romans uh, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Okay, It says, uh, For as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. Okay, For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God but the doers of the law will be justified, okay? Uh, and like I said, it's very important uh, in these verses to make sure that you have the context, especially right here, uh, because you could read that last bit of verse 13 and think that, okay, if, I, if I'm a doer of the law, then I'll be justified, okay? Uh, and that's, uh, that's not what we're saying here, okay? Uh, it's very important to, to note that, okay? If, if you read that the wrong way, you can say, all I gotta do is obey the law and I'll earn my way into heaven. And that's, that's simply not the case. Uh, going back to uh, verse 12, it says, For as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. Okay? Uh, in uh, verses 12 and 16, uh, 12 through 16, these verses basically expand on the point that, that Paul is, has been making here, uh, that the judgment of God is going to be according to the, the measure of light uh, or revelation uh, that each person has received. Okay, You're going to be judged based on what you know uh, and your response to what you know. Okay, uh, Now, in this verse here, two classes of people are in view, okay? You have those who do not have the law, all right? That's Gentiles, uh, anybody that's not Jewish. Uh, and then you have those who are under the law, which are anybody that is Jewish, okay? Now, these two classes are going to include anybody uh, or everybody except those who are in the church of God. And you can see uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32 to see where Paul divides the human race into these three classes, okay? Um, now, it, said, uh, it says, uh, again, it says, for as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law, okay? Uh, now, it's very, very important to note that it doesn't say they will be judged without the law, okay? That's not what it says. It says they will perish without the law, okay? Not having the law is not going to be a credit to them, okay? They are still going to perish, okay, without it, okay? They're going to be judged basically according to whatever revelation uh, that the Lord gave them and, and on their response to that revelation, okay? If they fail to live up to the revelation that, that has been given to them by God, then they will perish, Okay, uh, and I've, I've thought about this sometimes before. I mean, uh, I read a book about a uh, an island somewhere in the Pacific where a, a plane crashed in World War II with people on it, and there was a tribe that uh, of people that had never seen anybody from the outside. Uh, and it got me to thinking, well, what about those people? Okay, nobody's ever been there before. Nobody's ever shared the gospel there before. So you're telling me that all of those people went to hell until they got the gospel uh, and so I don't think so. Uh, I think basically they're going to be judged on whatever revelation uh, that the Lord has given them up until that point, okay? Uh, we move on to the, the Jews here, and this is going to be those who have sinned in the law uh, will be judged by the law, okay? The Jews who have not obeyed the law will be judged according to the law, and they too will perish, okay? Okay. Um, the law demands total obedience, okay? Uh, now, I think it's, uh, it's very important to note here that the law was, was God never designed uh, his law, his holy, uh, the, the Pentateuch, uh, Ten Commandments and, and 
and uh, all of that, uh, all of his laws. He never designed all of that to save. Okay, that was never the point. All right. Uh, if it was meant to save, okay, then we would be able to obey the law as a means of salvation. Okay, and we can't. We can't. Okay. Uh, as we've mentioned a few lessons ago, Jesus uh, tells us uh, this is impossible with man. Okay. He's talking to Peter in Matthew 19, uh, verse 26, telling, you know, because Peter's distraught. He's like, Lord, who can be saved? And Jesus says, you know, with man, this is impossible. This is impossible. Uh, but he finishes that verse and he says, with God, all things are possible. Okay. Uh, the law was designed merely to point out our need for a Savior, okay? And it's that point here uh, in chapters uh, 1 through 3 that Paul is really trying to drive home, okay? Uh, it's our need, okay? Uh, it's hard to convince somebody uh, that Jesus Christ is, is Savior, is Messiah, if they won't recognize that they need to be saved. Okay, if they can't grasp that to start with, you're going to have a hard time convincing them that Jesus is uh, their Savior. Okay, you first have to convince them that they have a need to be saved. Okay, uh, the need has to come first. Okay, and that's what the law did for us. The law came first to show us that we needed salvation, that we needed a Savior. Okay, we move on to verse 13 and verse 13 is in parenthesis uh, all the way down to verse 15. Uh, it says, for the hearers of the, for not the hearers of the law are justified or just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Uh, the word just and uh, justified here, uh, this verb uh, and words from the same Greek uh, root, uh, and the, the Greek root is justification, uh, occurs about 30 times in uh, Romans and is, is concentrated in chapter 2, verse 13, through chapter 5, verse 1, okay? It's a, uh, it's a legal uh, or forensic term, uh, and it comes from the Greek word uh, for righteous uh, and means literally to declare righteous, okay? Okay. Uh, now, the verdict we're talking about here, uh, it includes the, the pardon from the guilt and the penalty of sin, okay? And it means, uh, it includes the imputation, the imputation of Christ's righteousness to our account or the believer's account, because uh, not just anybody gets that. You have to believe on Christ, okay? Okay. Uh, now, this provides the positive righteousness that man needs to be accepted by God, okay? Uh, God is de going to declare a sinner righteous or not guilty based solely on the merits of uh, the righteousness of Christ, okay? You can't add anything to that, okay? You can't do any kind of works to add to it. You can't, I mean, it's saying that you have to help out is like saying Christ got you 90% of the way there. All we need is that last 10%. Okay, no, that's not what it is. Okay, you can't you can't help Christ with your salvation. He's already taken care of it. Okay, uh, this is a transaction. Okay, where the believer's sin has been imputed to Christ, imputed to His account in His sacrificial death. Okay, you can find that in Isaiah fifty three four and five, uh, and in First Peter chapter two verse twenty four. Okay, and the believer is going to get Christ's perfect obedience to God's law put into his account. Okay, and you can find that in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Okay, uh, we're going to start with the hearers of the law now. Okay, uh, mere possession of the law, mere knowledge of the law is not enough, okay? 
uh, the law demands nothing less than perfect and continuous obedience. Okay, it has to be continuous, perfect and continuous. Okay, no one is going to be accounted uh, righteous because he knows what the law says. Okay, if that was true, then when Jesus got there, he would have patted the scribes and the Pharisees on the back. Nobody knew what the law said better than they did, but that's not what happened. They didn't get the pat on the back that they were looking for. Okay, uh, now I can't imagine being charged with a crime myself uh, and standing before the judge. And telling him, no, 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 it's okay. I know what the law says. Therefore, I can, I can do it. Uh, I know it's a crime to commit, to commit, to do this, whatever it is. Uh, that way, I, I, I can do this, uh, and it's okay. Uh, you're not going to get points for knowing what you did was wrong. Okay. Uh, if anything, it's only going to increase your guilt uh, for violating that law. Okay. Uh, the only way of obtaining justification under the law, okay, the only way of, of basically uh, earning your salvation through the law uh, would be to keep the law in its entirety from the day you were born. Not, not from this point on, from the day you were born. Okay, and as we've already discussed, this is uh, impossible because all men are sinners. All men are sinners, okay? This verse seems to be setting forth a, an ideal condition uh, rather than something that is, is actually possible for human beings to obtain, okay? We're seeing the ideal here, uh, not something that we can, we can actually uh, do, okay? Um, we move on to uh, doers of the law, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I mean, you could have somebody... Read this the wrong way, okay? Uh, so it's important to note that the New Testament teaches emphatically, okay, emphatically, that it is impossible for man to be justified by keeping the law, okay? Uh, you can find that in Acts 13, uh, or chapter 13, verse 39. You can find that in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, you can find that in Galatians uh, chapter 2, verse 16. Verse 21, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can find more, okay? Uh, as we've already stated today, it was never God's intention, okay, that anyone be saved by keeping the law, okay? The law was only ever meant to show us God's perfect and righteous standard, okay? Uh, and the fact that we could never measure up to it. Okay, we're meant to see that too. We can never, we can never actually do this. Okay, uh, thereby making our need for a savior perfectly clear. Okay, if you truly understand the law and truly understand yourself, you know you could never keep it all. So the only logical conclusion to come to is that you are in need of a savior. Thank God for Christ. Thank God that he sent his son. We needed a savior, okay? Now, even if you could keep the law perfectly, like we said, from this day until the day you die, uh, good luck, by the way, if you're gonna try. Uh, but even if you could do that, okay, uh, you'd still not be justified by the law uh, because the sins in your past already condemn you, okay? Uh, so when this verse says the doers of the law will be justified, we have to understand that the law demands absolute obedience, perfect obedience, okay? Uh, I, it, I can almost detect a hint of, of sarcasm here from Paul. Uh, it's like Paul is saying, okay, uh, if you want to get to heaven by observing and keeping the law, uh, all you have to do is keep it perfectly since the day you were born until the day you die, and uh, then you'll be justified by keeping the law. Okay? Uh, I mean, the cold, hard fact about that is that nobody can actually do that. Okay? We were all, we are born sinners. 
Okay, all of us. Okay, Paul might Paul might as well. I mean, I can I can almost picture him in my mind saying, "Okay, you want to earn heaven? Jump over the moon. Good luck." Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's the same absurdity here. Okay, keep the law, keep the entire law perfectly since the day you were born, and you'll get there. Good luck to you. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't earn heaven. And now this is this is why context context is so important here when uh, reading the scripture. Now someone could read this verse uh, and they they could cherry pick this verse and come back to you and and they could say you know see here uh, all I have to do is keep the law because it says here that doers of the law will be justified. Okay. All right. Well, technically technically that's true. That's true. Uh, they don't understand that not only do you have to keep the law perfectly, you have to have kept the law perfectly. Okay? And I, no, nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. Okay? Even our heroes, our heroes from the Bible, all had, all had problems. Okay? I mean, the, one of the greatest uh, men in, in Jewish history was David, and David had a bunch of problems. He wouldn't have been justified by the law. Uh, he was, he's probably still considered their greatest king. He would not have been justified by the law. Okay. Even Moses messed up and they revere Moses just as much. Okay. Uh, and James tells us in chapter two, verse 10, he tells us for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay. So basically what we're saying now is that even if you could keep the entire law uh, perfectly for the rest of your life, uh, except for that one, even, even if you kept the law perfectly since you were born, except for one tiny little sin, okay, uh, and you stood before God on judgment day, uh, and you only had what, that one tiny little sin that one time, okay, that one, that tiny little sin would still condemn you to hell, okay? That one sin, okay? Uh, this, this shows us what God's standard is, okay? It's perfection, all right? Uh, the standard uh, of God is his perfect son, and nothing less than that is going to suffice. Okay, uh, you can't play. You can't play the compare game. That's not going to work. We've talked about that before. You can't say, "Well, hey, I'm not as bad as this guy." You know, this guy over here is a drug dealer. Uh, you know, I've never sold any drugs. You can't do that uh, because unless you can say, unless you can compare yourself to Christ and say, "I'm just as good as He is," and nobody in their right mind would do that. Granted, uh, would say that they're they're as good as Christ. Uh, no, I mean, you'd have to be delusional. Uh, but nothing, nothing less than that perfect standard will suffice. Uh, if you're going to try to keep the law and get to heaven through the law, that's what you have to do. You have to be perfect from the day you were born. It only describes one person that I know, and that's Jesus Christ. Okay? Yeah, I mean, and I know some great people. I know some great people. we got some great people at this church. They're not perfect, though. Uh, it certainly doesn't describe me. I'll be the first to tell you that it's the per perfection does not does not describe me. Okay, I am a work in progress. He's still working on me, uh, and and continues to do so. Okay, I mean I, I fail God. I mean every, every day, uh, especially when you start to consider that, that it's not just sins of deed. We're talking about we talked a couple of weeks ago sins of thought. That's, that's a dark road to go down. But yeah, I mean, sins of thought, they're still sins. Uh, and that's the, that's the standard that Christ set for us, okay? Luckily, this is not something that we actually have to try to do, okay? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to obey the law. You definitely should. You should try to obey the law out of respect uh, and reverence for God. You should not try to obey the law out of, out of any kind of desire 
to earn your salvation. You can't earn your salvation. You can't add to the work that, that Christ has done. Trying to do that only says that the work Christ did wasn't good enough. Uh, and that's a pretty blasphemous statement. Okay. Uh, just think about this. You know, our, our response to our salvation is to respect and try to obey Christ. Uh, I mean, you can't, you can't try to obey the law out of a desire to save yourself. Okay. Uh, salvation has already been paid for. All you've got to do is pick it up and accept it. Okay. We'll, uh, end there tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Remember all the prayer requests we've had. Remember, uh, all the places we're going to have coming open now. Uh, and, uh, try to be smart about that. Uh, Hopefully we'll have services here uh, like normal again very, very soon. I can't wait for the day. Uh, and we will continue this uh, online ministry here. Uh, hopefully uh, well on after that fact. Uh, and we'll be picking up next week. We'll do verses uh, 14 in chapter 2 through verses 16 in chapter 3. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Please check out Preacher Leon and Donald's videos as well. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, we ask, uh, first and foremost, that you'll bless uh, the reading and the hearing of your word here, Father. Uh, we, know, we know from your word that your word never comes back void. We praise you for that, Father. We ask that you'll, you'll use us out in the world, Lord, to reach the lost, uh, to find those who, who have not heard your word, Father, find those that, that even are, are hateful towards your word and towards you, Father, and to to preach Christ to them, Lord. Help us help us to do that, Father. Uh, we know that, that it's not our job to save these people. You've already done it, okay? Uh, our, our, job, our job is only to, to plant these seeds, Father, uh, to water these seeds, okay? Uh, we know that the growth always comes from you, and we praise you for that, Lord. We ask that you be with us throughout the rest of the week uh, till we're able to come back uh, into, into this building, Father, uh, and worship your name together as a church, Lord, as your church. Uh, we know this is just a building, but we, we really do miss uh, gathering together as uh, the body of Christ, Father. Uh, we miss it and we, we long for the day when we're able to come back together again. We thank you for everything you've given us, Father. And we praise you for all the many blessings that you, you rain down on us. Uh, all these things we ask in Christ's precious and holy name, Father. Amen.